Thanks, everyone. You can have a seat. Well, as we come before the Lord with the word, we're going to look at God's, what he has to say and just our time. And we're just going to pray right now. The Lord would just open up everything that we need to open up so that we can hear from him. Would you just bow with me? Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that um, we are looking at your word today and what it's saying. And Lord, I hope, I pray that we would open with our ears and our spiritual heart and not our earthly heart that would get being hurt or condemnation, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give each person a, a, a truth that they can walk out of here with to stand on, that we stand on your word, and we just thank you now in your name, God. Amen. Well, um, this morning, we didn't even know that it is uh, World Women's Day. Like, I didn't even know, and here I am preaching. It's like, okay, so I'll preach to you next year. But we don't know, um, actually, in, in a little bit, we'll preach when the men go to retreat. But So it's Women's you know, International Day. We're talking about family and how to steward God's family. And, and my name came up because I like family. You've heard of me say things like that. I'm so excited. Our, our youngest daughter is flying in the next hour to come down here for a week and with her little daughter. And it's like, woo, woo, it's family time. I can hardly, I love family. I love being around kids. I've gone to camp um, for, for many years. I, um, you know, I, you, you, know, you know about that. Sometimes so people think, oh, goodness, you know, Lottie, what can she say? Because her experience is everything is perfect and she lives in a little bubble land and Tom's little white picket kind of surrounded, you know, it came from Ohio that it came up and surrounded me and, you know, us and everything. It's not true. Um, that our, My family is a, a bit of a mess, just probably like most people's family are. You know, we look at people and we see people and maybe when they've, they've had, um, um, you know, they're walking in the Lord and you see the good things and you don't always know. And I'm not going to just air out all my, my laundry, but, you know, like our family is, is normal. Um, but what is normal? Tom's, you've heard of Tom's normal because like he preaches every week and you've heard him talk about the fact that he has like one brother. He has two cousins in the whole world. They lived in California. Tom was in Ohio. So at Christmas time, there was Tom and his mom and dad, a brother, and then one set of grandparents, six people total for Christmas in an 800 square foot house. That's not so bad, right? And so, uh, but so what, you know, so then Tom, we started dating in 1975. We were very, very young, and that is the truth. Um, Tom says, I'm a child bride. No, but we were young then in 1975. So we came up and we started dating, and I told him on Christmas Day, we have a family gathering. On Boxing Day, we have a family gathering. We have about 35 people um, for each day. So this is this little prairie guy or a little Ohio boy that came to, you know, and, and thrown into our Mennonite. And now, who, if, now, come on, who here didn't eat at a pool table for family gatherings? Anybody? <laughs> I mean, right? How do you do a big table? You have get the pool table. That was at my grandparents. That was at our, our house in our basement. You ate. You stayed, that was the biggest table that we had that didn't fit 35 people. But still, you know, pool table. That's what it was. That was the that was the anchor of our our family gatherings. But was it a perfect family on both sides? Absolutely not. I, you know, there is um, mental illness in, in, in one side of the family. And my um, cousin, though he was a Christian, took his life. And that's like that, you know, those kind of things touch your family. And, you know, God is there. But mental, mental illness is, a, is a, um, something to be dealt with and not to be ashamed of. Um, on my other side, my uncle is a pedophile. Got to many of us. Not nice. That's not a nice family. So you look at you think, oh, look at our little perfect little family. You know what? No, we dealt with things. You dealt with things. Did I go through everything you went through? Absolutely not. Did you go everything I went through? No. We can't judge each other, but we can look at the principles of God of how to steward our family. And this is again by by Christians. That you know things things, things happen. Things happen in a Christian home. Things happen in a non-Christian home. But the difference is, as a Christian home, we stood on the word of God and said, Lord, you can heal us where there was damage, where God did not want ever damage, did ever, things to ever happen to people. And so many people in a size, this, you know, church our size, I know that so many people have been, been hurt and damaged by, by people, by people. And so we're going to look in this morning and see, well, how did, um, how did David steward his family? Because we're looking at the life of David through this series. So God has a pro had a promise for David. 
And it was in 2 Samuel 7, verse 11. Um, the, can, if you, I think maybe even the, sec, the slide there, second slide, if you don't mind. And so um, we're going to look at 2 Samuel. It says this. This is, this is a promise for his family. It says, the Lord declares to you, David, that the Lord himself was, will establish a house for you, David. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offerings to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now, when a promise is made to somebody, and this was King David, we can't say, well, that doesn't apply to me. Because that we, by extension, we see that God's promises, he's always writing to specific people, but we can say this applies. This was a promise to David. This is a promise of a child of God, and therefore it can be a promise to me too. So he's saying um, that I am going to establish a kingdom and, and to the next generations, and I'm going to establish that. And for King David, we see that the genealogy of Jesus came out of King David on both sides of Joseph, um, which is his, her, his earthly stepfather, and then Mary as well. And so this promise of God came to fruition, and, and he says, I will establish uh, the, the throne of the king, his kingdom forever. And that was true of David. God had a plan for David, and he had a plan for his descendants, and God has a plan for you, and God has a plan for your descendants as well. And in fact, um, we were going to look at also uh, David, and, but uh, that maybe it wasn't always good news. Because when I look at the examples of the sons or the daughters that are mentioned with King David, it's like, yikes, these are going to be some stories. So we're going to try to do a light version of what happened in David's family. 2 Samuel 13, it talked about this, that the, David had a son called Amnon, and um, he took advantage of his half-sister, Tamar. Um, the problem with this is, obviously it was wrong, but the, also the problem is that David did not address the sin in Amnon's life. That David was the king and, and also the father of Amnon, but he did not address the sin. So what happened then? Well, then Tamar's sister, or excuse me, brother, um, addressed it. And Absalom took care of it. And he said, okay, if you don't take care of it, David, and two years after this discretion, after this, the, this, uh, this grievance, then Absalom decided, I'm going to take it into my own hands. And he killed, he killed his brother. And so um, you look at that, and again, that God, or excuse me, that David did not address the sin, and he did not bring him to accountability, first of all, to Abnon, and then to his son Absalom. And because of that, you see all kinds of, of, of problems that David had um, with Absalom. If you read the, through the Bible, that Absalom just, that, that, he, that he spun off. And what God wanted God, uh, David to do was to hold um, Absalom accountable. He wanted to hold, first of all, it should have been stopped at the, at the the one that made the discretion in Amnon, but then it went into De Absalom. And because of that, things spun off. And God is saying, you know what? When you steward your family, that means to do the good things, the fun things, but it also means to take care of the hard things, right? That it's not, stewarding our family is not just in the fun times. But you know what? Um, we're going to also look at what, what, what was the promise. So I'm going to look at the end of David's life and the promise that he gave. And it says, when the time drew near for, for David to die, he says he gave this charge to Solomon because Solomon was David's son and he took over the kingdom then and he became the king. And, um, but this promise was given then. It says, observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk, this is in 1 Kings 2, 2. Walk in his ways and keep his decrees and commands his laws and requirements, so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go, and the Lord may keep his promise to me. If your descendants watch how they live, and if they walk faithfully before me with all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. So well, the reason I went skip to the David's end of David's life is that we see that David did not always steward his kids well. He did not always, he did not guide them, he didn't hold them accountable, but you know what, that didn't negate the fact that God had made a promise, and we started this with God, the promise um, in, uh, in Samuel about what God said I will do, and God still fulfilled that, and says, if you, he says, if you what, observe what the Lord your God requires and walk in his ways. So, so 
see, God gives forgiveness. God doesn't say, I will wipe you off the, the, my, um, the earth. I will take away the, the kingdom from you. Because it said that David was a man after God's heart. But David, as we heard last week, was very flawless. So what we need to do is look and say, you know what? I have not messed up so bad that God, not, God will not um, fulfill the promises that he has made to me and to my family. And that's what we're seeing here. Again, in, in 2 Samuel, God says, I have a plan for your family. And then there was a lot that happened there. And, and again, we went through some of it last week with, with um, King David. And then but the end, God says, no, I'm going to bless your family. Because why? As Danny mentioned last week, that he, is that Siri talking to me somewhere? That, <laughs> oh, is that the Bible? <laughs> Sometimes, okay, little commercial. Tom will go out that, you know, house, you know, and he'll say, I love you. And then Siri will be, um, you know, I like you too, you know, on, on the way out. <laughs> No, I'm not talking to you, Siri. But anyways, but God did talk to God did talk to David, and and it said that that David was a um, had his heart towards God, and that God was able to bless him as opposed to Saul, who was also a king. And God took away that because Saul did not make right choices. Saul messed up too, but he didn't come back to the Lord and he didn't repent. Whereas David, you can see in the Psalms, it's like he could constantly came back to the Lord. So today again, we're going to look at what stewardship. So how. Do we steward? So, because there's not a lot of examples of David, but we do know that there was the promises of God. But we're going to look at stewarding. It says, what do we steward? Well, we a lot of talk about stewarding in, in ways for finances, right? That we talk about we're going to steward our finances. We we talk about that, and, and um, we're going you know we're going to look at and see what is a biblical stewardship. Well, it's a way of life, right? Stewarding. You don't just decide one day oh, I'm going to steward. Well, today my finances, but now I don't have to do it for, you know, the rest of the 364 days. We'll just get it in order today, January 1st, and we're good to go. No, that's not stewarding. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's how God calls us to live our life. And when you look at the Bible, right smack right from Genesis, God said in in. in in our in the word about how to steward this earth it's like take care of take care of this earth i've given you dominion over this earth the whole thing is about taking care of god's planet and everything that he created and take care of the of the creation of god well there is no greater creation that god made than people and how to get people born people are born from parents and so therefore god is saying steward it everything you do i want you to steward and the most precious gift and and the greatest treasure is people. So we're supposed to steward our time, our talents, our resources, but we're also stewarding, um, stewarding people. And obviously, stewarding is what is it? It's taking care of something on someone else's behalf. Because ultimately, we see that, um, it, you know, you've raised kids. For those of you who have at the other side of raising their kids, we don't own the children. You just kind of get to, to rent them at a very expensive rent for a... <laughs> A, a long, 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 long time. And then you get to have grandchildren, and then you get to just joy. Just have the joy, right? And the great-grandmothers here. But, but okay, but we're going to look and say, what are we supposed to do? As Christians, that means as parents, we will raise our kids to be like Jesus, that's what stewarding means, and to grow in character, consistent with the character of their Heavenly Father. That is our goal. You know, um, we, we bring children before the Lord in dedication to God, and we're saying, God, would you, would you take them right from, their, from being young and right through, would you help me to steward this, this child? When I look at, okay, what, what kind of characteristics do I want to steward in, um, in others, in others? Well, we want them to be faithful. We want them to be loving. We want them to be kind. We want people to be gracious. We want them to be merciful, to be just, to be patient. And we want them to have good in their lives. We want them to be good. We want faithful, loving, kind, gracious, merciful, just, patient, and good 
people around us. And we're supposed to steward that. We're supposed to help people, encourage people to, to um, cultivate that in our lives. And you might be sitting here thinking, well, I'm not, you know, I don't, my kids are grown or I don't have kids. I don't have never been married. But again, we're going to look at stewarding is not just for our kids, but it's for, for others. It's for others around us. It's for those that, again, if we're stewarding people, that God is saying, I want you to take care of others. Um, so what is, uh, in Micah 6, 8, I want to mention this. It says they are to justly, to, lo- to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with their God. Again, that is what God desires of us. In Micah 6, 8, they are to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with their God. Well, what is our responsibility? I need to have the qualities in me that I want to have others around me have. That I have to be faithful to God. That I have to be obedient to God. To be humble, to make sacrifices for my kids. To make sacrifices for those around me. I need to raise my children with integrity. If I want integrity in my kids, I have to have it in myself. We need to pray for our kids. We need to pray for our our families. We need to pray for our youth. We need to pray for our kids. As again, as our kids are meeting right now, we need to pray for them that they get the the truths into their heart. Uh, we need to ask for wisdom. Man, we need to ask for wisdom because we can't do this. It's not supposed to be on our wisdom. It's supposed to be on the Lord's wisdom. And then you know what its promise says? If we ask for wisdom, we will receive it. And so if we don't know what to do and how to, in dealing with different people, it could be a coworker, it could be uh, somebody that's you related with, but if you don't know what to do, then you ask for wisdom. Then you need to stop and listen to God and then find out what that wisdom is and find out, and he's going to talk to you. We have to be accountable for our actions. So again, so this is starting with me, that if I want people to be accountable around me, and that's the problem with David, is he was not always, he did not make his children accountable, and he was not bringing them up in the way he was responding to the Lord, that they didn't always respond to the God the same way. Um, That we need to teach God's word to our kids, to each other. We're going to talk more about that later. In Deuteronomy, if you want to turn to Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7. Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7. There's no rustling of pages with electronic Bibles, but that's okay. (laughs) But, you know, you like the rustle, right? But, hey, maybe there is rustling of, there might be, you know. You'd get a page app of rustles. (laughs) That'd be silly, wouldn't it? Okay, Uh, Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7, this is what it says. These commandments that I give you today are to be open upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. And just over a couple pages, Deuteronomy 11, 18. These are my favorite scriptures in the Bible. This is what it says. Deuteronomy eleven eighteen it says, Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. In verse 19, it says, Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. It's my favorite scriptures in all the, uh, well, maybe not the whole Bible, but it's like they're right up there. These, these, um, these teachings, it says, I want you to talk about them, the things that I've told you. I want to talk you to talk about them at home when you sit, when you're doing the dishes, when you're cutting the vegetables, when you're driving in the car, when you're walking down the road, when you are, whatever you are doing, use the principles of God, use life to teach around you. Again, this is, this is for, to do with our kids, but this is to do with those that we are supposed to steward, and that's anybody around us, that God has asked us to just, as we do life, to teach. Well, we can't teach what we don't know, right? And so if God wants us to have that in our hearts as well, fix these words of, of, of mine in your hearts and on your minds. Tie them. It's like do something physical to remember, um, to 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 make these principles 
to pass them on to the next generation because everything is just one generation long. If we don't reach the next generation, it's gone. It's over, right? And so we need to always go into the next generation. How do we do that? Well, sometimes we get to preach up in front of people, but most often... We just get to teach when we're beside our kids, when we're beside our family, when we're beside those who, who work with us. If we are to be good role models for our children, we must um, have God's words reflected in our own lives, right? I can't be a role model if it doesn't truly live it, if I just say it. It says, beware of the opportunities given to us to teach God's godly perspective. You know what? The... Um, the internet nowadays is filling you with their perspective. What's hand sanitizer is good? What isn't good? What is, what is, this is how to wash your hands, how to don't wash your hands. So you, it, I mean, it truly is amazing that the good that's going to come out of this is people are going to be washing their hands again. Hallelujah. Right? That's good. Good people. So it's all, we should have been doing that, but there it is. I was in the wa- I, again, I was in the washroom yesterday, and, and, and somebody came out of the washroom. It was a child, but then they just walked right out, and it's like, no, come back here, wash your hands. I didn't. I refrained myself, but I should have. I should have. But you know what? Teach your kids to wash your hands, and you need to wash your hands, and you wash your hands, and how to do it. And so we need to give up opportunities. But if we're so careful about our germs, are we as aware of the, what we're passing on to the Lord about the Lord? Right? We're so, we, we, we want to make sure we don't have a germ passing on, but what are we passing on to the Lord? Do we, do we care about it? The, um, there's, um, I just want to mention a sad, a, a sad story of, of a family that I knew, that, um, that the, the mother and father had grown up, both grown up in the church, and they decided um, that it was not good or uh, God did not, that they should not um, indoctrinate their child towards God, that they want to raise this child to be able to make a decision for themselves. Sounds, it doesn't sound like a horrible theology, like I want them to make a choice. Well, so instead of taking this child to church so they would, could go to um, worship God, they you know, went skiing, they went to the beach, they went sailing, they did all kinds of things. And as that child is an adult wants nothing to do with God because they thought they were going to give him they're going to give a balance of of what God we're going to keep I'm going to keep it private and my child they can make up their mind well what they did is they gave that they showed the child that they don't have to worship the Lord and they don't have to walk in the Lord and so to me it's one of the greatest um, sad things and this child still to this day is not serving God and so um, that that in thinking that they were doing the right thing it's like no and I remember Jerry Cook and Barbara Cook who used to come to our retreat and speak she's he would say now you doctrinate those kids towards God you tell them about God you let them know that he is what a good God so we don't have to say, oh, he's a, a God that is wants um, justice, that he is a harsh God. No, he is a good God. And so that we're supposed to doctrinate our kids. The, what is doctrine? That's our beliefs. We're supposed to doctrinate them on that God is a good God and that we can go to him and that he cares for us. Proverbs 22, 6. Turn this. You, uh, you've heard this? You, the people, uh, we quote this as if this is a promise. Well, this is a principle of God. But there, let's look at this. Proverbs 22, 6. You've heard this. It says, train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train a child. Okay, then you have to stop. What is the first word? Train. Train a child. Who's supposed to train a child? Parents. We have to train children. So sometimes we say, oh, God just promises that the child will not grow up because I took them to Sunday school um, once, you know, almost every week. And, and, uh, and you know, and, and they, learned about, they learned about God that way. No, train a child. We have to train kids. And so the principles are there. So the family that I just talked about, they did not train the child. They did not say, this is God and we're going to serve him. They just said, oh, we'll leave, we'll leave, we're going to let him have this choice. Well, he didn't have a choice at all because he didn't grow up knowing a loving God. He did, they didn't tell him about it. They might have believed it themselves, but they did, not part, they did not pass it on. They did not train it. And so the greatest way that we, we train someone is 
I do, you watch. Our kids are always, man, you see that, you know, if you have siblings, if you had, if you two kids, you always look to the oldest sibling. It's kind of like, what did they do, right? How did they do life? And, the, and you're training. We're training when we don't talk. We're training when we do. And so our actions, that is where we're supposed to start training is with our actions. If we're not, if our action, if we say one thing, yes, love the Lord your God with all your heart, but we're not doing that, they might hear this. You know, they might hear it in Sunday school, but if they go home and they're going to, eyes are going to be on you and you're, we're, they're seeing what you're doing, they're, they're, they might still go off because it's like we have to train them and we have to be it and everything in us needs to be training. How we do it, our, our, our language, our potty language, I'm sorry, there's too much potty talk out there and that is, that is not bringing honor to the Lord and I can't train what I don't know, right? Right? I can't train what I don't know. So if I don't know something, it's okay. We don't need to know everything. Or, you know, our coworkers, we can say, oh, I'm a Christian. But if we're swearing out, you know, up and down so that we fit in, what are we training them? What are we doing? What is our example? We're not being an example to anyone. So it says to start our children off. Get them grounded. We dedicate kids. We talked about that. Ground them as part of that. We say, well, you bring up your child to know the Lord. And, and some people say, yes, but they don't ever come to church after that. It's like, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. That's not what God wants for us. The best teacher is our actions. Sending them to church is not the kids' Um, teacher that's supposed to do it. It's not the youth pastor that's supposed to do it. It's not Matthew that's supposed to do it with our preteens. It's not the young adult leader. It's us that we're supposed to be teaching them. Church is the family of God. So we sang this morning. Um, Leanne did a great job of choosing our songs about God is my father. God is your father. So if you look beside you, who are you looking at? Your brothers and sisters, right? If we have the same father, then we're brothers and sisters. And so if, it, it, you know what, it's like we are, we are family and we're supposed to take care of one another. We're supposed to care about what somebody else cares about. Again, we're supposed to be encouraging to each other. We're supposed to be encouraging and, and we need to be telling people that God is what a good, good father that he is the one that, you know, that we have a wonderful father. And even those that, that are hard, that they don't know the Lord, God created them. He, they are a creation of God. And we are to be a good steward. We are to be aware of what's going on. It's a wonderful thing that in this time right now that we can, can be aware of what's going on in the world. And it can seem like a burden. But remember, they are God's children. And he is going to take care of them. It is not up to us. And in my fretting, I cannot solve the world's issues that's going on. But it has to be up to the Lord. In Matthew 12, verse 48 to 50, it says this. Matthew 12, 48 to 50. It says, who is my mother and who is my brother? And this is Jesus speaking. It says, pointing to the disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of thy father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. We said that. If, um, so, and then Peter in 1 Peter 5, 2 to 3, it says this, be shepherds of God's flocks. Well, what are shepherds? What do they do? Who do they take care of? Sheep. But God is saying, will you, will you shepherd my flock? So shepherding is stewarding. So in 1 Peter 5, 2 to 3, it's saying, would you, would you take care of my sheep? Would you take care of others? God is saying, okay, if we're all, if we're connected and we're fathers and brothers and, and sisters and everybody and cousins and second cousins once removed, then it's saying, would you shepherd um, my flock? Would you shepherd the people that I've given you to shepherd? How do we shepherd them? Well, in Matthew, again, it says, teacher, teacher. Um, which is the great commandment of the law? So again, they, they came to, to Jesus and said, okay, you want, kind of want to trip him up. What is the greatest law, Jesus? And Jesus says, well, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Good. Then it says, this is the great and first command. And uh, the second is like that. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then on these two commands, commandments depends all the law and the prophets. So how do we do it? How do we steward others? Well, we're supposed to love them the way God has loved us. So how to steward is we're to love. 
Take care of each other. Be aware of what God is doing. Acknowledge that they're brothers and sisters. Don't leave somebody that's um, by themselves. But to be a good steward, we have to put God first and then have to treat our family, to treat God's family. And we need to treat them with as much love as, as for what we want for ourselves. And in 1 Peter 3, 8, this is, again, how do we steward? It says, live in harmony with one another. Love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. And do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing. So how do we steward people? We love one another, 1 Peter 3, 8. We love as brothers. We are compassionate and we're humble and we don't replay evil with evil and don't replay insult with insult but with blessing. Instead of um, insulting someone, we're supposed to bless. And I'm going to end with this scripture. We're going to have a, a song that Leanne and Danny are going to come and play. But there is, um, this is, again, I, I, this is a verse that I just, uh, you know, I, I stand on this principle, and we re recited this to our kids as they grew up, and now, and you know this all well, Joshua 24, 15, it says this, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I am not responsible, f I am responsible for myself and for those around me, and I will give an answer to God for how I teach and take care of others. I will be re held responsible for that. So, be a good steward. But it's as far as I am, you know, you can't make a decision for someone else. But again, Joshua 24, 15, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We told our kids as we grow up, you know, you can have a job even if you worked all night on, at McDonald's all night on Saturday night. We're going to be in church on Sunday morning. You'll, get, you'll, you'll be able to live. You're going to be able to have a nap. We're going to be in church. This is how we're going to live. And you know, one thing I want to mention too is that I know that this is a principle of the Lord that if we, that if we as we raise and we train up a child that they won't depart from it. I also have a sister that walked away from the Lord. And you know, I've told you about her. That, and the fact is I can't make that decision or Tom's brother walked away from the Lord for a time after he, you know, his parents brought him up in the Lord. We are not responsible for others' actions. I'm responsible to them. I want to, I want to train others. I want to um, teach others. I want to teach, you know, from my own teaching of the Lord. But this is not about condemnation that if our kids aren't serving the Lord, that we didn't do what we were supposed to do. Because guess what? We do have a choice. But So give people a good choice. You know, wherever you are in your stage of, of if you have kids, grandkids, great can, grandkids, friends, co-workers, but you can just say, but Lord God, I am going to serve you, and therefore that will affect those around me. Um, and so now this song that Dan, uh, Leanne, it's, fr it's fred off, fresh off the presses, man. Um, and this song, um, is, it is a, it's called The Blessing. And it is about how God wants to bless us um, from Numbers 6, 24 to 26. And it's also Deuteronomy 7, 9. And just let these words, we don't have them on the screen, but let these words sink in that this is a blessing and this is what God wants to do here. I just encourage you to close your eyes just so you can let just the words kind of wash over you.
His favor be upon you in a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you in a thousand generations, and your family, and their children, and their children, and their children. Lord Jesus, we praise you, Lord God. We take this blessing. We take this blessing. He says, if I will put, if we will put you first, that the blessing will come to a thousand generation. And that is what we're praying for, Lord God. We pray the blessing of your Holy Spirit and on families, on people here, Lord God, and it is never too late, and that you will anoint them, Lord God, to raise their kids in you. Lord God, if their children are outside of their home, if they're not following the Lord, that can stay, they will love them as you love them. They will show them the Heavenly Father's love because they love, Lord God, through, through them, Lord God, we just pray your blessing, Lord God. We praise your blessing, Lord God, and praise your blessing, Lord God. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, Lord God. That says, may your face shine upon us. We just thank you, Lord God. Would you bless us, Lord, as we steward, Lord, that you have uh, put on us to take care of each other, to take care of the flock, Lord, to take care of our brothers and sisters in you, to take care of each other, Lord God. And we just pray for that anointing, Lord God. We praise you, Jesus. We just praise you. Okay, Peter. So just to encourage you guys, just stay in the place with the Lord. The Lord is working. Mm -hmm. He is working. Because the song that Leanne just started singing is the song that the Lord put on my heart for you people this morning. And... I actually, I texted Tom and I said, I need to meet with you in the lobby. This just happened like 10 minutes ago. Nobody even knew this was going on. And Tom and I were out there, we were wrestling over this and praying and, and, and saying, God, how is this going to work if this is, and, and you have a very faithful pastor here, okay? Um, if you can trust somebody, you can trust this man's heart, okay? And he, he just was wrestling with this, Lord, how do we make this fit with what you're doing? And as we're wrestling through it in prayer, and all of a sudden we hear, I hear Leanne, and she starts singing this song because I, I had the video. I mean, it's not even on Apple Music. You can't even get it yet. And all of a sudden I hear, and I said, Tom, this is the song. This is the song. 
Okay, so this is what the Lord is declaring over you, over your families, over this church, okay? This is not an accident. We don't believe in accidents, okay? So I don't know if it's okay, but I just feel like you need to declare, just keep declaring that over this church. Do you want to sing it again? Yeah. Join in the amen part, the just amen join in part. here. we speak blessing and not curse Lord I pray there would be curses broken this morning has been spoken over individuals people that is not what you have they are children of God and you promised your faithfulness and Lord God we break curses and we put blessings on people's lives you would just anoint them Lord God right from their heads to their toes and Lord God may they be strong in you Lord God that Lord Jesus just as King David didn't do it all right but Lord God he had a heart that when he was wrong he confessed it and that you worked him in worked into his life and it said that you blessed them Lord to a thousand generation and we pray for that Lord God that we pray for that principle Lord God that our kids who have been brought up in you Lord they were astray Lord they would come back to you Lord Jesus we just pray that we speak your blessing Lord God we speak your blessing from your word we just thank you Jesus we just thank you Lord God in your name Jesus in your name Jesus now, I just want to give a chance to, if, there, if you're here and you um, have not yet given your heart to the Lord, we do this every week. We want to give an opportunity, this God that we're singing about, maybe you, you've heard about, but if you're here this morning and you just want to give your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I want this God in my heart. I want to give my life to Jesus, that he died on the cross and he wants to forgive you of your sin. If you're sitting here this morning, you're saying, I want to give my heart to Jesus this morning. Would you raise your hand? I'd love to pray with you. Is anybody? 
thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Now in your name, God, that we would go out, we would walk in your authority, that we would walk in your name, we would walk in your blessings, Lord God. And Lord, I pray, Lord, it says train up a child, Lord, that we would have the courage and the strength to train. Lord, if we don't have kids in our home, but Lord God, we can still be an influencer in our community with uh, who, Lord, Lord, wherever we live, Lord Jesus, wherever we are working side by side, wherever we are, Lord God, that we can be influencers and that we can we can just teach your way, Lord, as we walk, Lord God, that we don't have to have a special, uh, Lord, only a special Bible time, but Lord, as we walk, as we do our lives, Lord God, that we would be an example of you. And we just thank you now in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah, that song Leanne came to me after their worship time. She says, oh, a lot. She says, this song came out. She says, it's so perfect for today. She says, do you, th- do you think I could do it? It's like, well, can we find us? We went to the computer, computer found it. It's, you know, God, it, you know, because if you're not flexible, you say, well, no, we have everything planned. But, you know, if you listen to the Lord, he will guide you. And he's going to direct your path. He will direct your path and everything. Amen. So thank you. Why don't you have a stand, stand up. Um, take care. Go wash your hands. Love you. What was that? Okay, and if anybody wants prayer, especially for this subject, you know, again, we've been talking about heavy things, and there can be burdens the Lord, the enemy can do, put on us. But if you want prayer for anything, there's people that would love to pray with you at the front. Thank you. Well, that was.